Okay, perfect. So now we're live. Welcome to class today. Today is about idioms, and everyone seems to love idioms. So um, what we'll do is we'll jump right into this. And so the process of this is what I want is to show you the idiom, and then I want you to tell me if you've heard the idiom before, if you know what it means. And if you don't know what it means, I want you to try to figure out what it might mean. Okay, as we know, idioms are phrases that are have words that might not make sense um, in that statement. Uh, <laughs> so sometimes they're literal, sometimes they're not. They're not. For example, today's class is: Are you a chatty Kathy? A chatty Kathy is someone who talks a lot. I don't know why they named why the name is Kathy. It could be Chatty Charlie, for example, and actually sounds better. Um, so that's that. So let me get this set up here. Okay. Can you make this a tiny bit bigger? That looks okay. And now I will start sharing my screen with you. So one moment. Here we go. All right, great. So now you can see this. Okay. So this is, these are some idioms that we might not know much about. Okay. Hopefully. Um, these are ones that I don't think are very common, okay? So what we have here, actually, let me see. I can make this a tiny bit bigger. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the first one is all walk and no talk. Has anyone, has either of you seen this one before? Ken or Raphael, have you seen the idiom I'll walk and no talk. No. No. Nope. <laughs> Good. Well, let me show you the example. Okay. So this is, he, he always has great plans, but he's all talk and no walk. What do you think this might mean? Uh, maybe, maybe just to pretend to give some idea or to pretend something, but he doesn't take any practical action, just uh, giving ideas, I think. Okay, well, that sounds pretty good. Ken, do, do you have any ideas here? Yeah, I, I saw the same thing. Uh, someone who, how can I say, uh, planned the idea, but uh, he or she uh, want to do it actually, just a plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. So a good mix of the two. Basically, it's someone who says they're going to do something or makes plans and then doesn't come through. So the meaning here is that he has great ideas or plans, but never does them because he can't or he doesn't want to. Okay. So that's basically that. So he's all talk and no walk. I think there's something else that says he can talk the talk, but he can't walk the walk. And that basically means the same thing, that he talks a lot and says stuff, but he doesn't actually go through with it. Okay, so any questions? So basically, this is what I wanted to do, okay? Take a look at the idiom, see it in a sentence, and then look at the meaning. All right, so now if you move down just a little bit, you can see something here. It says donkey years. What is donkey years? <laughs> no, I, no idea. So, for example, I haven't seen that movie in donkey years. Raphael, did you want to say something? No, no, I have no idea. <laughs> Okay, that's okay. Ken, do you have any idea? Maybe from this context, many years. Yeah, that's exactly what it means. And so that's why I think the sometimes seeing the example sentence <laughs> is very helpful. So it means a long time. So I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Now, this isn't something very common in my vocabulary, uh, donkey years. But it does exist. So very good. All right, so, <laughs> okay, so.
So this next one, why don't we have, well, why don't you guys read? So I smell a rat is the idiom. And Raphael, why don't you go ahead and read the sentence? Something doesn't sound right. I think I smell a rat. Mm -hmm. Have we heard this before? No, never. Never. Perfect. This is exactly what I want. Ken, what about you? Uh, maybe no. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, can you think of what it might mean? I think it means fishy. Fishy or <laughs> dark, doubtful. That's really okay. Mm, yeah, something doesn't sound exactly right. Mm -hmm, right. Okay. Yes. yes. Let's go down here. And then he is, someone's lying. Okay, maybe not telling the truth. Something doesn't sound exactly perfect here. So good. All right, perfect. Yeah, and now, Ken, I bet you <laughs> will know this one. Ken, can you please read this example for me? Smells fishy. Okay. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I answer. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Smells fishy in here. I have to get to the bottom of it i have to get to the bottom of it yeah i what put that in the, <laughs> i don't know the bottom uh, what that bottom of it get to the bottom of it perfect well okay so this is good so you know 50 percent of the sentence so smell fishy is exactly the same as above that's why i wanted to add it um something smells fishy something sounds not right basically okay and then i'll have to get to the bottom of it I literally put this in here to confuse you or to test you, basically. To get to the bottom of something means to solve or to find out. So it's when, I, when it says something smells fishy in here, I'll have to get to the bottom of it. I need to find out why something that doesn't sound right. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Okay, no problem. So to get to the bottom of it. <laughs> So again, smells fishy is something doesn't seem right. Okay. So any questions here, Rafael? Had you heard of smells fishy before? Uh, no, no, no. I just doesn't okay. remember. Okay. No, that's great. That's great. This is exactly what I was trying to do in this class today: is um, see things that you haven't seen. Now. This one you probably have seen. I think, Ken, you see it. We've talked about this one before, but I like it. So, Raphael, it's your turn, please. Talk about, can you read the example of a piece of cake? I make dinner. It's a piece of cake. Thank you. And do you know what it means? Uh, it's easy. It's straightforward, I think. Mm -hmm, exactly. Like I said, I think Ken and I have talked about this. It's easy. All right, so we'll move on to the next one. Pardon my, <laughs> pardon my friend. Uh oh, uh oh, don't look at that. Okay. So Ken, can you <laughs> can you nicely read this? Okay. Oops. <laughs> Wait. Time one second. Come. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened there. Um, and, um, I have no idea what happened. Yeah, oh, uh, there. Yes. That was super weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, tastes like the, the oh, well <laughs> pardon my friend <laughs> but this cake tastes like pee <laughs> <laughs> exactly <Okay. the> <laughs> have we heard of pardon my friend i had to put that in there because it's yeah. part uh, of this so have we heard of pardon my friends before oh yeah i know yeah do you know what it can you explain what it means Maybe pardon, uh, excuse me, my excuse my language. <laughs> Actually, it's probably Recovery. a better definition than what I have written. So yes, Rafa, have you seen this before? Um, no, 
I I haven't used I haven't heard this, but uh, okay. Might be might be useful. <laughs> I'm, so I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out the how can he how is the background of this statement? I know. Perhaps there might be someone who doesn't like French people, or you know. I don't think it's that. I think maybe um, when it was invented, and I don't know. I should probably look that up. But when, for example, something was happening, and maybe someone said bad words in French, basically, you know, um, because it, this basically means excuse my French, you know, excuse my language. Um, so here, basically, the whole mean is excuse the words I'm going to use next. That's why I have to use this one, because it's not a good word. So you say this before you're going to say something that could be rude or unexpected. Okay, and obviously this word was probably unexpected, <laughs> and you probably wouldn't say it on a normal basis. So um, you, you can use this in any kind of situation like, oh, pardon my French, but she is a nasty person, you know, when you say something terrible. Okay, any questions? Rafael, anything else? No, no. Thank you. Okay, good. Well, let's go down to the next one. So are these <laughs> hopefully interesting for both of you? All right, this one, this one's good. All right. Um, it's Rafael's turn. So I always, I can never remember whose turn it is. So, uh, Rafael, can you please read? Uh, going on this trip has more holes than Swiss cheese. You should think about it some more. All right, so more holes in Swiss cheese. Now, Swiss cheese is in capital because it's a pronoun, the Swiss. But you have to know what Swiss cheese is. And <laughs> Swiss cheese is a cheese that has a lot of holes, a lot of, you know, air pockets in it. So do you have any idea what this could mean? Uh, probably when we are... When I have to, when to go through a road with so many holes and uh, obstacles, or maybe, or maybe when we have to to undergo uh, our area with full of, I don't know, things to overcome. I don't know obstacles in general. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I like that. Ken, what about you? Have you heard about this? Have you eaten Swiss cheese before? Yes, I know. Maybe like it's like a uh, Tom and Jerry's cheese. I think a lot of holes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> a lot of holes. Okay. Holes. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I picture this, and this means that like a security holes. Maybe you need to think about the plan more because it has a lot of issues, <laughs> made problems on the plan. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. So you both kind of understand this, which is perfect. So it has a lot of problems. Okay, so the trip, so maybe you're having problems reserving a hotel, you don't, there's construction, you don't know which roads to take, etc. Okay, so more holes than Swiss cheese. Perfect. Continuing on. <laughs> oh no. Ah, uh, darn. <laughs> All right, to knock socks off, Ken, can you go ahead and read, please, the sentence? Mm -hmm. To knock socks off. She walked it and it knocked her socks off. Sorry, I walked in. I walked in, walked in and it knocked her socks off. Mm -hmm. Maybe shocking? Yeah, okay. I mean, if you were smart, you would have read the definition <laughs> because I showed it for a moment. But yes, this does mean that she's surprised. Okay. Normally, when you have your socks and you take them off, they're not knocked off. Knock, for example, is when someone's at the door and they, for example, that's knocking. Mm -hmm. um, or knock could be that you you hit something off a table and it falls. Okay, so mm -hmm. there are different meanings for knocks. And so this really doesn't make sense. Um, so, yes, it just means that she was very surprised. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, get rough or, or can any questions about anything that we're seeing? I mean, are there other ones that you want to talk about anything? Just let me know. Uh, no from me. Perfect. Well, in that case, okay. <clears throat> Ken, you might know this one. Cat got your tongue. And I think it is uh, Raphael's turn to read the sentence. Uh, you're pretty quiet today. Cat got your tongue. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's... Uh, it's quite common here, and uh, it's you are really. I think the the all. I think the statement uh, explains itself, and if someone is really quiet. It doesn't it's really silent and doesn't want to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that is yes. That means that they're really quiet. So basically, can't cut your tongue is you're trying to encourage someone to talk when they're being quiet. Maybe they're keeping a secret or they aren't in a good mood or something like that, okay? So Ken, any questions here? Ken, you, did you know this one from before? Uh, I didn't know this. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, interesting idea. Good, all right, good. They have it in Spanish too, so, okay. This is a good one. Head over heels. Ken, do you wanna read the example, please? Yeah, Sandra is head over heels for Jack. Do you have any idea what that means? Ah, uh, yeah, it kind of uh, Sandra loves uh, Jack for everything from okay. head over heels. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That she's head over here. She's crazy in love with Jack. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically it. So perfect. Let me just move this down here for you. So she's in love. And the next one, okay, the next one we have is there's plenty of fish in the sea. Rafael, can you read um, the example, please? Don't worry, Ben. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Do we have any idea of what this idiom might mean? Uh, women? There's plenty of women in the environment, perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps someone, when someone is feel, feeling sad because might have ended a relationship or something like that, and uh, there's a friend to cheer him up and say something like this, hey, there's another woman in the world and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This can go for, you know, females, males, it doesn't matter. Um, I just chose Ben, and it could have been a girl's name. It doesn't matter. So, um, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, there's plenty more people out in the world to choose from. Basically, is what they're saying here. Ken, have you heard of this one before? I think so. Yes. To yeah, uh, okay. plenty of fish. Yes. Okay. Well, very good then. So let's continue on here. Uh, it just says. When someone is trying to give advice about dating, there are more people out there. So good? Okay. Ken, you might know this one too, just because we've done some other idiom classes. Kick the bucket. Um, is it Ken's turn to read? Maybe, yes. All right, so can you read for us? He, does, he doesn't look too well. He might kick the bucket soon. Do you, have you seen this before? Oh, yeah, it's an idiom. Mm -hmm. All right, well then, Rafael, do you know what this one means? Uh, to die? Mm -hmm. Yep, that easy. Um, here we go, to die. <laughs> Straightforward, exactly. I don't know the history about this one either. Kick the bucket. I mean, this is literally, you have a bucket on the ground, you kick it. And then what happens? Maybe the bucket falls over and stops or something, but that's, don't know. I should have looked up the history. Maybe one day I'll do one with the history. <laughs> okay, so this next one here is my neck of the woods. So Rafael, please go ahead and read. Hey, next time you are in my neck of the woods, give me a call. Mm-hmm. Good. Have you heard this before, Rafael? 
Never. No. Okay, Ken. What about you? Uh, no, but I think uh, I think I know the meaning. Okay. Well, what do you think? Uh, maybe if uh, if you are in my town or if you are close to me, come come close to me. Don't be a stranger. Give me a call. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Don't be a stranger. I like that. You know, that's a good phrase too. <laughs> Yep. In if you're in my area or neighborhood. So very good. And now, okay, I have a one track mind. Okay, this is a little okay, so there's good. Okay, so to have have a one track mind. So maybe um Rafael, you be person B because this is technically Ken's turn to read. So Ken, you can be person A, as you can see here. We have A, B, and A. Okay. So Ken, you're A, and then Rafael, you're person B. Okay. Okay. Uh, Charles, come watch the movie. Is there popcorn? You have such a one-track mind. You are always thinking about food. <laughs> Come on, this is funny, right? <laughs> um, I invented this conversation, obviously. Um, so how a one-track mind? Have we heard of this before first? Yes. Have a one-track No. Okay. Well, that's okay. Rafael, what about you? No, no. I've never heard it. Okay, good. Um, do you have any idea of what it might mean? Either one of you can answer. Uh, uh, you're about you're just thinking. You just think about one thing. You, you don't think of anything else. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So maybe this is related to a song. For example, a track is normally on a CD, probably on a tape, a cassette tape, if you're old enough to remember, right, Ken, what <laughs> cassette tapes are. Um, and so maybe if you have a song stuck in your head, they came up, you have a one-track mind. I don't know. Uh, but yes, basically, as we said, it's a, a person only thinks about one thing all the time. Okay. So good. Okay, break a leg. No. Um, Rafael, why don't you go ahead and read um, our example sentence with break a leg. Uh, Kate said, break a leg tonight. Have you heard of this? Um, yes, uh, it means good luck, I think. <laughs> it does, good. Ken, have you heard of this one before? No. Well, I have a surprise. Really? It's a Good look. Okay. Why well, break a leg? I don't know, but anyway, yeah. some idiom is, well, uh, is, is not rational, actually. Well, actually, in Spanish, it's worse. Um, it's basically, oh. you know that swear word that we saw earlier that had the asterisk in it? It's basically eat and that word, so. <laughs> oh, I see. Good luck. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it just means it's a break leg is something you'd say to someone before they go on stage, before they have a performance, something like that. Okay. What do you say, Ken? Uh, in just Japanese, good just luck. Say, good luck, well, hold on. Hold oh. on. Hold on. Yeah. Japanese say hold on a lot. Yeah. Sometimes good well, luck. Mm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> no, I was just wondering if it was something interesting, uh, something different. Rafael, do you have anything in Portuguese that you say? Uh, about good luck? Yeah, like a different way of saying it. Because like I said, in, in Spanish, they basically say eat, and then I'm typing this. That. <laughs> I think so, anyway. Do you have anything in Portuguese that you say? Mm. Not as I remember right now, I don't. No, I'm trying to to find out something, but uh, not as I remember. Okay, all right, that's fine. I'll see if I can find something. Um, maybe a word reference. Word reference is normally pretty good. Oh, good luck. 
No, that's not gonna have fun things. Okay, so there's that to break a leg. And our next one is under the weather. If I'm correct, it's Ken's turn to read the sentence. Okay, under the weather. Isaac said he feels a bit under the weather, so he won't be joining us today. Good. This is Isaac, actually. Uh, Isaac, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it has two A's, don't ask me, but... Yep, so Isaac. Um, so, can do you, do you know what this means? Yes, it uh, means uh, feel, feeling not good, or feeling sick, or ill. Okay, exactly. We're speeding through these. We run faster than I expected today. So Isaac doesn't feel good, probably has the or the flu. Okay. Any questions at this point? So Anything? the mm -hmm. under the weather suggests does that person catch a cold or uh, some other illness? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly what you said, that they're just not feeling well. Maybe they have a bad headache, maybe their stomach hurts, it could be anything. Okay. Okay, got it. I got it. Well, that was pretty easy then. Rafael, do you have any questions about anything that you've seen? Um, no, no. I don't have to. Okay. All right, fantastic. So now on to the next one here. Okay, thick as thieves. Rafael, have you heard of this one before? No, never. I've never. Okay. Okay, could you, um, well, actually, and now I've forgotten whose turn it is to read. I think it's Rafael. I have a 50% chance, so. <laughs> uh, my I best so, yeah, friend Rafael. and I were thick as thieves right away. Do you have any idea what it could mean with the context? Uh, I don't know. Are thieves thick? <laughs> to be honest, I don't have no idea. That is okay. What about Ken? Oh, a bit difficult. My best, my best friend, that close friend, very close. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, that's best friend, close friend. Okay, well, let me take... Maybe we hit off quickly, soon. Okay, kind of. Okay. We're thick as thieves right away. So this is one um, that probably doesn't make sense. It says, we became very close or trusted each other quickly after meeting. Mm. And I just saw that I have a notification from someone who's trying to get in. Um, signed in to your... You know, someone else told me, I invited one of my friends that I'm teaching English to here, to the class the other day, and she wasn't able to sign in. And now this person says the same thing, that not able to sign in, do you use, Google, use Hangout, don't you? You mean a uh, class link? Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, this, uh, you know, direct link you, you post it on Facebook uh, can mm -hmm. work. I think could work to anybody. Well, see, that's what my friend said too. She said, I tried to get in many times and, and it just didn't work. And so, and I asked him, do you have a, a Google <laughs> email? She said, yeah. So. I don't know. Obviously, I've never tried to get in because I have to be here all the time. So, um, so I don't know. Well, I tried. I responded. So hopefully, we can see that. Okay, good. So moving on. Okay, so born with a silver spoon in his or her mouth. Uh, Ken, I think it's your turn to read this. Okay. Okay. Sari was born with a silver spoon in her mouth. She has everything she'll, she'll ne uh, ever need. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Maybe 
she was born in a rich family. Okay. So she could get anything they she want. Kind of. Um, have you seen this before? <laughs> uh, she was born in the context. Uh, yeah, from the context. Oh man. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, but you think bore the silver spoon in his or her mouth. Now, what happens with me in Spanish is that um, when people use literal or when people use idioms and their literal translations for me, I'm like, what? This doesn't make sense. Or sometimes you can figure out um, what it is by the context. Um, so, so yeah, but this is exactly what you were saying. Uh, let me just move down here. Born into a rich family. Now I have someone else. <laughs> it says on the on the Facebook link. It says someone else says, "What about me?" You can join. Too. Ken, this is your job. You normally respond to everybody. <laughs> I have this little pop-up thing on my computer. That's how I'm seeing this. <laughs> I'm not in Facebook at the moment, but I was. But I was able to find me. Do you use Hangout to you? Uh, yeah. Actually, he, he said he couldn't hang, uh, sign in. Right. So if he could sign in, I think he, this uh, Google, uh, Google link can work. In order to... Uh, you know, join the Hangout session, mm -hmm. he needs to sign in on Hangout. So maybe he might, might the problem of the sign in Google problem, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, someone else, that person <laughs> just responded also, again. He, if he has a Google Plus, uh, oh, oh, I think also uh, to make a Google Plus account is necessary to sign in on Hangout. Yeah, I mean, if you're signed into your email, for example, I think that's all you need to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't know his problem, but maybe sign problem. <laughs> and if he doesn't have a, you know, the, the Google Plus account, I think it's impossible to join to Hangout session, as far as I know. Yeah. Well, now this person says, where is the link? <laughs> <laughs> ah, link is, okay. Link is. Uh, Do you want to answer that one? Sign in Google account. Maybe he didn't click, click on it, sign in Google account link. Do you want to type that? We'll go to the next one. I'll have a, uh... oh, cool. Uh, cool. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so, Rafael, can you go ahead and read this sentence for us? Uh, Sam, quitting, Sam quit drinking Coca-Cola called Turkey. Yeah, have you heard of this one before? No. Okay, I know I sent you off to work, Ken, but have you heard of cold turkey before? Maybe you're just busy typing. Okay, well, cold turkey oh, literally yeah, yeah. is... <laughs> I just sent a link again. Okay, yeah. perfect, thank you. Yeah. Um, so cold oh, turkey... I, I know this, uh, John Lennon. When is... When? Oh, sorry. It's very much John Lennon song, I know that. This means, yeah. What does it mean? Actually, I, I think it's related to drug to, you know, the, to after quit the serious drug, maybe some people, uh, people suffer this, this symptom. In, uh, yeah, that's the uh, whole turkey the song is about. Okay, well, um, I see where you're going with that. It just means that Sam stopped drinking Coca-Cola abruptly or suddenly. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's necessarily so serious. Okay, I got it. <laughs> yeah, this one's not so bad. Um, if it was a different word related to the first one, probably would be bad. But um, Coca-Cola, he quit suddenly is basically he just, what I have here is he didn't wean himself off it. I wanted to add this here. To wean off of something is to decrease in using something little by little. 
Okay, so if you say, I'm going to stop drinking Coca-Cola by the end of this month, I'm going to drink one can today, not nothing tomorrow, one can tomorrow, for example, you know, and literally, little by little, stop doing something. But cold turkey is in the moment. You say, I'm never going to have another Coca-Cola in my life. So that's probably why it's, you think it's related <laughs> to drugs because some people just stop. <laughs> Maybe it could be a, uh, my definition could be a slang. Uh, sorry, Rafael. No, no, I just, uh, just to figure out, uh, so does that mean he stopped uh, gradually drinking? Is that right? Well, that's wean off. That's what I have here where it says wean himself off. This is gradually stop drinking. In this case where he says cold turkey, that means abruptly or suddenly. Okay, thank you. Yeah, does that make sense? Are there any other questions? No. No? Okay, well good. So, I mean, I wanted to add this phrasal verb. So he didn't wean himself off of it. Um, so to wean off is the phrasal verb here, to gradually stop doing something. So good. <laughs> okay, Ken, it's your turn. Touch it with a, a barge pole or a six-foot pole. Now, I know it as a six-foot pole, um, and barge pole must be British English. So, Ken, why don't you go ahead and read the example sentence? Okay. The food looks so gross. I wouldn't touch it with a barred six foot pole. Hmm. <laughs> any any idea what this <laughs> Maybe this person uh won't eat anything. Anything at all. Okay. It's not a piece of cake for this person to eat <laughs> for this thing <laughs> about him. Good example, all right. Um, kind of, Rafael, do you have any idea or have you heard of this before? I don't know, probably it reflects an action. Uh, I, is it, perhaps it means something that he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to touch the food and, uh, and uh, because it's awful and uh, he, he doesn't want to even get close to it. Okay, well, I'm definitely going to agree with your last comment. He doesn't want to get close to it. So, for example, you see something that's so disgusting or gross that you wouldn't even go near it if you had a pole. So you wouldn't touch the food literally with a pole. In this case, a barge pole, I don't know what it is. It's probably a barge is a really big um, boat that carries freight and cargo and things. So it's for shipping. Um, so it's really, really big. So to me, it means that the pole would be very big. Also, six foot pole is six feet, which in meters would be two meters. Yeah, two meters. So, you know, it's a very long pole. Even get near it. <laughs> I thought this one was pretty funny. So something that repulses you or looks so bad, you don't even want to go near it. So very good, Raphael. <laughs> okay. So if we continue here, it looks like we have one. I think this is the last one. So when pigs fly. Um, Ken, is it your turn to read this one? No, it's Raphael. Sorry. Raphael, go ahead and read the example, please. I'll go with you when pigs fly. Have you heard of this before? Um, no, I, I have an idea of what it means, but... Uh, All right, well, let's go with that. So what do you think it could mean? Uh, never. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Um, sure, Ken, have you heard of this before? No, uh... No, I, I don't think so. Pigs fly. Okay. I know the pigs on the wing. Pink Floyd song. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to music. Well, um, actually, let's take a look at this. It's 
I'll never go because pigs can't fly. It's impossible. So you, <laughs> basically, Raphael, you were correct, but good. All right, and like I said, I think this is the last one I have here. Yeah, it is, so very good. So what I'd like to do now is ask you two if you have any idioms, any favorite ones, ones that you always use. Nobody like has any good idioms? Fly. When pigs fly, it means maybe their <laughs> chance. <laughs> Exactly. Kind of ironic. Yeah. No, when pigs fly, I will. <laughs> so, um, good. Do you have a favorite from today? I mean, we can take a look at one, maybe one that wasn't very clear or something like that. Should I go to the top? So, any questions? So do you know, uh, you know, these idioms can be used both American, America and uh, British, Britain? As far as I know, yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't think, there's one, let me see, I'll go to the bottom here and I'll write this. Um, to go postal is one that I saw, and this is an American one. I saw that this was an American one. So, um, he went postal when he saw the letter. Can you think of what this might mean to go postal? Uh, post office? I don't know. Post? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's postal, yeah, um, but not exactly in this case. He went postal when he saw the the letter, the news, the information, his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Rafael, any ideas? Uh, maybe frantic, or maybe he has gone frantic, or maybe he's gone dazzled, or astonished. Exactly. Or something else. Yeah. He went crazy. To go postal is to go crazy. <laughs> he was frantic. I like that word. So that's what it means. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Well, like I said, are there any ones that you want to talk about? Um, like I said, anything that maybe wasn't clear, I can go down the list. Um, the donkey ears I don't think is really too common. The smell of rat and something smells fishy <laughs> are pretty common. So, um, like I said, some of these were easy, some were difficult. Um, it just depends, like, if you've heard of them before or not. Um, but in general, I think that they're not very common ones that you would learn, you know. Um, you know, Ken had spent some time in the United States, so I would, you know, expect Ken to <laughs> have heard of some of these. Also, when you yeah, hear I, one, yeah. My roommate uh, uh, told me some, uh, maybe Southern idiom or American mm -hmm. idiom, but I forgot, yeah. He taught me See, and that happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I know many times I hear them here, and I understand due to the context. Maybe I don't understand what they said. Right. I don't remember what they said. So that's it's completely normal. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so good. Perfect. Well, do we have any favorite ones? Maybe not from today's class, but in general? I just uh, wondering why postal means parking <laughs> such thing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know. All I know is that it's American. Mm, okay. okay. Um, let me see if I can find the history quick. Um, to go postal. And my computer basically isn't working. Here it goes. Now it's thinking a little bit faster. We'll see if it decides to load or not. Here it is. I should have put history. Um, I really have no idea. Um, 
Ah, uh, okay. Uh, well, it says on August 20th, 1986, okay. there was a shooting at a post office and 14 yeah. employees were shot and killed. Six were wounded. This is in Oklahoma. And then a postman committed suicide, so this is not good. So going postal might mean that they just overreacted. Okay, I see. Yeah, I got the context. Wow. Thank you. It's <laughs> oh a terrible God. history. Um, All right. Um, what was the other one that we were wondering about the history? I think it was towards the beginning. Um, I'll walk in and talk. Donkey ears? Or I smell a rat? Pardon my French, it was that one. Pardon my French history. This, this should be interesting. Why do we say pardon my French when we curse? C U R curse means to say naughty words or say to, to say bad words. Um, so it's. <laughs> The expression dates to 1895, so very, it's like just over 100 years old. Um, let's see, this is loading. It said something about Old French, but I didn't really see anything else. Yeah, it's still loading. Well, in English, we've also stolen a lot of French words, so it doesn't surprise me that we would have stolen one of their idioms, for example. Um, this does not really want to load. And... Um, well, now this is the early 1800s. More of a literal use. Uh, so, as I was saying, it was probably that people were speaking in English and then all of a sudden said a French bad word um, to kind of be so bad, I guess. That's kind of what they're saying. So, I was kind of right in that aspect. Okay, interesting. So, a little history on uh, <laughs> the idioms today. So, good. Well, do we have any other questions about anything today? Uh, just about the cold turkey, I didn't understand the meaning. Mm -hmm. Are turkeys fast? Are they quick? It, it's to quit something, stop something. So a lot of people will say, I quit smoking cold turkey. Basically, you had your last cigarette and you never had one again. You just Is stop completely. Is that because turkeys? I, I try to understand the etymology of this idiom, but uh, turkey was the, the, the bird turkey, and the turkeys. What, what turkeys do to to stop doing? I don't know. Just, just trying to figure out the context. Well, this is. Um, there are several explanations. It says um, it says suddenly or without preparation, because I mean, if you eat turkey cold so you don't have to prepare it it says to speak bluntly with little preparation to speak directly uh it says it was originally used for heroin addicts so the drugs is there thanks ken <laughs> um it says it's an american phrase as well so there's also in the the dictionary there's a lot of different things that you can look here but basically it's just to, to stop something and that's it Is that a little bit more clear? <laughs> Maybe the meaning does help. And when you eat no, cold no, turkey, it doesn't. It, it, it's okay for me. Okay. <laughs> well, very good. Well, our next class is, I believe, about interview questions. Periodically, we do some questions about interviews just because it's really helpful. We kind of normally talk about the same general ideas about you know what you're going to do in the future, what do, where do you see yourself in ten years. Um, prepare you for an interview in English, and then next Wednesday we're going to be talking about ranting and raving. So if you don't know what that means, it's very it's um, expressive. So it's going to be expressive language. Okay, and so say, hey, that's wonderful. Say, oh my gosh, I've never heard of that before. That's amazing. Ah, 
things like that. So um, we'll talk more about ex expressive use in English. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Well, very good. Well, Rafael, it was nice to see you again. And Ken, it's always nice to see you too. Um, and that's it for today. So guys, have a great day. And thanks for joining. Okay. Bye. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.